All right, we're going to pray together. Just lift your hands up right where you're at. Father, we just come before you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you for what you're doing. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We glorify you. We thank you for this morning because we can be in another place, but we are in your presence. Thank you, God, for this place. Thank you for abiding in this place. Thank you that your children get to come and worship you. Father, we give you all the glory. And today, Father, I put myself in your hands, God. And I declare that out of my mouth, God, will come out like a double-edged sword, Father, that will penetrate the hearts of every person and every listener. Those that are watching, those that are listening, those that will listen later, those that will watch through YouTube. Father, today, I declare in Jesus' name that this word will cleanse them, that this word will purify them, that this word, God, will convict them, that this word, God, will sharpen them, that this word, God, will bring revelation, that this word, God, will remove the veils and the blindfolds, God. Father, I declare in Jesus' name Name, that the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are the revealer of all things. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you begin to reveal and that you remove blindfolds from people's eyes. Matter of fact, put your hands on your eyes and say, God, remove the blindfold. Father, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would remove the blindfold and that these, every person that is listening, God, Lord, at the sound of my voice, will not leave the same. I pray that this word is going to penetrate and pierce God. It pierces through the darkness and nothing can stop the word of God. Father, I declare this seed will germinate and give fruit in their lives. I ask God that as, as I stand behind you and that you speak to your people, that you would reveal downloads from the heavens. I pray that the prophetic be activated in this room. I pray, Father God, all over and across the nations, those watching us through other cities, other states, and other nations. God, that the prophetic would become activated, God. I pray in Jesus' name, God, that your people will not leave the same. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to help me. Help me deliver this message and that you would minister these people, God. I ask this in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's children said aloud, Amen. really loud. Amen. Amen. Stay standing. I want you to look at the title of the message because I want to take you and I started it last week. If you did not hear it last week, I ask you to please get either go to my YouTube, subscribe, and you can get the message there. It's really key that you listen to that. I'm doing a three-part, maybe four-part message on the desert. Say, I'm growing in the desert. Say it one more time. I'm growing in the desert. I believe if you can capture what I'm going to say, I believe you will walk through every trial, every tribulation, every hardship. You will walk through every problem very, very different. So I want you to go um, to the book of Genesis with me. And before we go there, let me give you a really quick background. I said to you last week, um, if you remember, and I talked to you about the desert, but I said to you how to get through the desert. And the only way that you are going to pass the test in the desert, because the desert is there to test your heart. The the desert is there to test your character. And I said to you that the only way that you're going to pass the test, do you remember, is if you have hunger and thirst for God. Do you remember that? Yes? And so it's really key for you to understand that when we are in the desert, say I am in the desert. Every person, I don't care if you're a leader, I don't care if you're a pastor, I don't care if you've had uh, 20 years in the kingdom of God, every person has to hear what I'm going to preach today. So say, I'm growing in the desert. Then on Wednesday, if you were here, I spoke about El Roi. Can you say El Roi? And I said, he is the God that hears and he is the God that sees. If you have not heard that message, please watch it. And, and uh, maybe just put it on your car right there and listen to it. It's really key because the word sets you free. You know what the enemy does to attack you? And what area and how he attacks you is the lack of knowledge that you have. Because wherever you lack knowledge, there you have darkness. The Bible says that the light is the God, word of God is the light. And so when the word comes to illuminate you, you are no longer bound to darkness because you have light. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
So knowledge is very powerful. So wherever you are, dark, darkness abides. That is the place that you lack knowledge. But the minute that you understand what God wants in your life, what God is speaking over your life, you now have light there. So the enemy can't come and attack you in an area where you lack knowledge. Are you, are you with me? And so I, I said to you, El Roe, say El Roe, the God that sees and the God that hears. So today I want to talk to you part two on the desert. And I want to talk to you about growing in the desert. Say growing in the desert. When I speak of a desert, I'm talking about a place that you have not arrived at. How many of you have unanswered prayers still? Raise your hand. If you have an unanswered prayer. If you have an unanswered prayer, you are in a desert. And so when we arrive at that place, then we arrive into our promised land. So any place between where God takes you out of and then you entering into that middle part, the middle part of your life, that is called a desert. So I want to read to you, and we're going to talk about Genesis, out of Genesis chapter 21. We're going to read 14 to 19. Are you ready? Are you really, really ready? Pay attention to what you're reading. You ready? Here we go. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. Uh, he set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. Say, Abraham sent off Hagar and her boy, Ishmael. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off. Say, she went away. And sat down about a bow shot away. For she thought... I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob, cry. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What's the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God, then God, then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. Say, my life's about to be changed. Say, I'm going to grow in the desert. You may be seated in the house of God. Sometimes, sometimes, say sometimes, we see the tests and we see the deserts um, that we go through as part of our destruction. We see it sometimes when God is testing us, when we are having to overcome a difficult situation. We sometimes look at that and we, we think that God is perhaps, you know, it's part of our destruction. That that test is part of something that's going to destroy us. Can you clear up my monitors? That would be great. When in reality, it's not there to destroy us. It's meant for God to do something in us. The deserts and the tests of your life, hear me and hear me well, are always meant to expand you. And they're always meant to take you to another place and to grow you. The tests of life are never meant to destroy you. The tests of life are never there to destroy your life. They could destroy your life, but they were not created to destroy your life. The Bible says Satan comes to steal, to kill. Come on, you know it. Help me out. And to destroy. But God came to give you life and life in abundance. The tests of life are not meant to destroy you. The tests of life are meant to expand you and to grow you. Thank you for the amens. Say the tests of life, the tests of life are meant to expand me and to grow me. So if people, if you look at people that have been approved, if you will, they, if you look at people they, that have been approved in the testings, they would not be what they are right now had they not been tested and approved. Gold is having to be put into a fire in order to become purified. The tests of life are not meant to destroy you. The trial that you have is not meant to destroy you. 
It was meant to grow you. You got to get that in your spirit. Because if you do, you will walk through every test in your life. And you will walk it with your head held high. And you will come out of that thing purified. And you will come out of that thing better. And you will come out of that thing more powerful. And you will come out of thing with that thing with more God in you. So the tests of life are not meant to destroy you. They're meant to grow you. They're meant to grow you. Say they're meant to grow me. They're meant to expand you. And so in the deserts, you will find all kinds of qualities that you possess. And it is only in the deserts of life that you will find the qualities that you really possess. In the deserts, you will find the resources, unlimited resources that God can provide to you that can only be provided in the deserts. Manna did not reign in Canaan, the promised land. Canaan, Canaan, they had plenty to eat. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. But it was in the desert that manna reigned from heaven. It is in the deserts that you will find unlimited resources that you cannot find once your promise comes. It is in the middle of famines. Maybe a famine with a family member or family. Famines in the economy. All kinds of different famines. You can find it only in the deserts of God will you only find God. It is in the deserts that you find God. It is in the testings of life that you find God. It is in the prunings that you find God. It is in those places that are tight and hard that you really find God. If you read your Bible, you will find men and women of God that heard of God. They had heard but their ancestors spoke about God. They had heard stories about God. You will find in your Bible that men and women had heard about God, but it wasn't until they went through the desert that they knew their God. It is in the desert that you know your God. It is in the desert that you know who really God is in your life. The Bible speaks of Jacob. Say Jacob. He had heard about God. He had heard about God. But while he was in Bethel, say Bethel, which in that desert, there was an angel that he saw for the very first time. He did not see it in the mountaintop. He saw it in the desert. Jacob's eyes, the Bible says, were opened and he saw angels ascending and descending. He did not find that when he had the promise. He saw that when he was in the desert. If you look at Moses, say Moses. It was in the desert that he found and saw a burning bush. It was in the desert that he heard God. If you look at Jesus, say Jesus. That in the desert is where Jesus saw the angels. There are benefits to the desert. There are benefits to the testings of God. In the deserts where is where your perspective can change. It is in the desert where your vision changes. We begin to see things the way God sees them. We begin to have peace of God in the middle of the desert because we see the thing finished and not in the process. In the book of Genesis, we just read here, but let me give you a review. In chapter 16 of the book of Genesis, we find Hagar. Say Hagar. Hagar was the servant to Sarah. Say Sarah. And she was a good servant. She served Sarah. But the Bible says that when Sarah would not get pregnant because God had promised Abraham a son and a descendancy, she would not get pregnant. So Sarah has this idea and she said, go and sleep with your servant, Hagar. Sleep with my servant. And so maybe she will start the lineage. And the Bible goes on to say that as long as Hagar was not pregnant, she was nice to Sarah. But the minute she got pregnant, she started to be cruel to Sarah. She thought she was all that. Oh, that's another preaching right there. She was fine until she became pregnant. And the Bible goes on to say that Sarah inflicted, say she inflicted Hagar with reason. And the Bible goes on to say that God, and I spoke it on Wednesday. God tells Hagar, because Hagar takes off running. She's like, the heck with this, I'm out of here. <laughs> I don't got to put up with this. But the Bible says that an angel stopped her and an angel told Hagar, go back to Sarah and serve her and submit to her. <laughs> God makes her go back to the affliction because it was in the affliction that God began to mold her. Yeah. Get Wednesday's message. 
And so here the Bible goes on to say she went on her way. And here we find in the book of Genesis, chapters later, in chapter 21, say chapter 21. The Bible says, and let me go from 16 to 21 in one sentence. <laughs> the Bible says that Hagar has Ishmael. He has, she has her baby. And once she has her baby, Ishmael, say Ishmael. She starts to be very cruel to Sarah. And one day Sarah looks at Abraham and she says, I am so sick of my servant. She thinks she's all that. And I'm telling you, you need to get rid of her. <laughs> and the Bible goes on to say that God speaks to Abraham. And God tells Abraham, send Hagar away. And so he tells Hagar, you need to go. I'm going to send you on your way. And we just read it. And the Bible says in Genesis 21, 14, we just read it. It says in Genesis 21, 14, that early the next morning, Abraham took some food and skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered where? Where did she wander? Say the desert, the desert of Beersheba. So she's on her way and Abraham felt so sad because he knew that that was his son and he felt bad. But God speaks to Abraham and he says, Abraham, don't worry about your son Ishmael. He's in my hands and I'm going to bless him and I'm going to make him also a great nation. And he trusts in the Lord that spoke to him. So he sent Hagar on his way. And the Bible says that when Hagar now finds herself in the desert of Beersheba, she runs out of water. Say she runs out of water. And Hagar knows that without water, her son cannot live. They are in a desert without water. And so she's looking at her child, Ishmael, and says, there's no way that I can live and my child's going to live without water. My son's going to die. So this Hagar, the Hagar, say Hagar, that we found in chapter 15, in chapter 16, we find Hagar, the Hagar, the one that the angel appeared to her chapters before and said to her, where are you running to? Go back to Sarah, the angel of the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but if an angel showed up in my house, things are going to be different. And so an angel showed up to Hagar's life. In chapter 15, chapter 16, and tells her to go back. That same Hagar we find in chapter 21, chapters later. And now she's in the desert. She's been sent off. And the Bible says in the desert, Hagar had forgotten the God that spoke to her in chapter 16. And so here's Hagar saying, my son's going to die. Wait a minute, Hagar. In chapter 16, God spoke to you. In chapter 16, God told you something while you were pregnant. And God said to you that your son, Ishmael, would become great and a great nation. And now in chapter 21, she runs out of water. And she's baby's already born. Ishmael's already, you know, walking. And the Bible says she began to cry. So she cried. Because Hagar man was manipulated. Hagar allowed herself to be manipulated by a desert. Hagar allowed herself to be manipulated by a season that she was going through. Hagar allowed herself to be moved by a desert that she was going through. And because of that, she started to behave. And she started to act. And she started to move according to the situation that she is now living. Oh, somebody has have an ear to hear what I am saying this morning and she ignored what God had revealed to her she ignored that God had said to her chapters before that your son is going to be great that Ishmael would be a nation the angel of God revealed it to her chapters before and that happens to so many people that happens to all of us the word of the Lord is being released God gives you a promise God tells you something something so amazing you have an encounter with God you heard the preaching you felt something in the altars you were in your prayer closet and God told you how it was going to be but all of a sudden when you go through the desert all of a sudden when there's a famine in store all of a sudden when you're going through a situation that is so difficult we forget what God told us 
and we become manipulated and we become manipulated we are moved by a current season we are moved by what we're going through come on somebody and because of that we start to behave a certain way we start to speak a certain way we start to uh, uh, see things a certain way the angel of the Lord had revealed it to Hagar my God I feel electricity all over my body I feel like God is going to do something great in your life today the angel of the Lord prophesied to Hagar while she was pregnant before the boy had ever even come to the earth but now in the desert she sees a famine no water say no water when you are in a desert when you are in a famine nobody calls you when you are in a famine the doors close on you when you are in a desert it is a place where you are waiting on God and God has not answered yet when you are in a desert they walked away from you they left your life when you are in a desert it's like a famine and, and ain't nobody calling you you feel alone you feel like God where are you God I thought you said God I thought you promised that is a famine and now Hagar is affected and she's being uh, manipulated by her circumstances she ran out of water and now she's being moved by a situation that she is currently living and like Hagar here is us say us and we have a promise from God and God gives us a direct word or he gives us a dream or he gives us a prophetic word or he speaks something into our spirit but if we don't have number one say vision say vision say vision say vision then we will be manipulated by our circumstances we will be moved in the desert we will be controlled by a current circumstance that is only temporary that is only for a moment and we let the famine be the determining factor of the, our state of being and suddenly we change the way we behave suddenly we were joyful and now we're sad suddenly we had faith and now we doubt because we're being manipulated by something that we are living when in reality God has promised you the opposite and if we don't learn hear me if we don't learn that this thing that we call suffering you need not suffer about a situation because God is still God and if God promised you I don't care what you go through God is still God and he says it it's gonna come to pass see if we don't learn this we are going to suffer a suffering that you not need to suffer. If you don't learn what I am preaching to you, you're going to cry a fit about something that you should not even cry a fit about. You're going to be desperate and anxious about things that you not need to be desperate about. You need to go to bed, child. You need to get some sleep. If you don't get what I'm telling you, you are going to feel desperation in the middle of the desert when you not need to feel desperation. Because many times in the desert, we are influenced, influenced by our current situation rather than by what God said. We are influenced by a circumstance in a desert rather than by what God has spoken in our lives. And the Bible says that Hagar, say Hagar, she ignores the visitation that she had chapters before. And Ishmael, she, this is what she does. Picture it. She puts Ishmael by a tree, leaves him there, and then walks away a great distance. And the Bible says, she said, I got to leave my boy over there and let him die because I don't want to watch him die. And she leaves him there for a long time, a long distance, disregarding what God has spoken to her chapters before. Hagar forgot that the promise of God, the one who had promised her that her son would be a great nation, is the almighty God, the all-powerful God. Listen, Hagar, it wasn't just anybody that told you something. It was the all-powerful, all-knowing God. The God that says you are a predestined people. The God that said I formed you in your mother's womb. The God that already has your end already knows it from the beginning. The God that spoke you into existence. The God God that breathed his breath of life into your body the God that created you the God that spoke it chapters before it's not just anybody Hagar this is God Almighty that spoke it into your life 
But the, the Bible says that Hagar leaves the boy and then walks off. And she says, I can't watch my boy die, so I'm going to leave him there. See, because when God releases a promise over your life, I'm going to say something to you. There is no word curse. There is no demon in hell that can stop. Not even a famine can stop the promises of God from coming to pass in your life. Nothing can stop. Not persecution. Nothing can stop the promise of God from being fulfilled in your life. There is no demon that can stop what God has spoken. There is no lack of water that can stop. Hagar, listen up. God spoke something to you and spoke something to your boy. And there is no lack that can stop what God says he's going to do. There is no famine that can stop what God says he's going to do. Because he's not just whatever. He is an all-powerful, all-knowing God. He knows exactly what he's doing. And nothing can stop the plans of God from come nothing say nothing nothing can stop the fulfillment of God's promises it doesn't matter the opinions against you it doesn't matter what anybody said nothing can stop the fulfillment of God's plan over your life the word of God says that his word endureth forever it is listen to me nothing can stop the plans of God it is in the deserts that you've got to keep believing God if there's a place you've got to believe you've got to believe God in the desert if you are in the desert I came to tell you this morning keep believing if you are waiting on God for something keep believing if you failed and things began to fail keep believing if you failed at something keep believing if something ended in your life, keep believing. Do not stop believing God. He is a God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if there's a place that you've got to keep believing God, it is in your desert. Don't let any negative, any negative situation or any negative thing in the desert control your life or control your mind keep believing God for what he revealed to you keep believing God for what he spoke over you keep believing God what the prophetic words said to you keep believing God the word of God spoke to you keep believing God say I will keep believing God Hagar forgot Hagar had memory loss Hagar I don't know what happened to her but she had a memory lapse and she forgot chapters before what God said, you shall be great, Ishmael. And the test comes and now she forgets. Isn't it like us to forget when the test comes? And she goes at a distance. And the Bible says that as she is in a distance, she says, I don't want to see you, Ishmael, die because you're going to die. You're going to die. There's no water. You're going to die. And the Bible says she's crying and she's sobbing and she's saying, I can't stop this death. You're going to die. There's no water. I have no water. I have no resources. You're going to die. And while she is there, the Bible says that her son cries out. Say her son cries out. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord heard him. <laughs> and the angel of the Lord descends. Isn't that cool? That your cry can actually be heard in heaven? And an angel descended and an angel came before her and the angel said, Hagar, what are you doing? And she said, I have no water. And he, she said, and the angel of the Lord said to her, didn't I already tell, told, tell you that your son is going to be a great nation? What are you doing here? Listen, if you study Ishmael and his descendancy, the Ishmael, Ishma, Ishmaelites, they were very powerful because the Ishmaelites' descendancy, it is there that we find the story of Joseph. Do you remember Joseph that got thrown into a cistern and the brothers wanted to kill him? Yes? And the Bible says that his brothers wanted to kill him. They sold him as a slave. Do you know who purchased him so that he can wind up in, in Potiphar's house? The Ishmaelites. Had it not been for this descendancy, Ishmaelites, he would have never entered there and Egypt would have never been saved. God had a plan for Ishmael all along. And the Bible says that the angel tells Agar, I told you that there is a plan for your son. I want to make two points in this morning to get you through the desert and cause you to grow in the desert. The Bible says that when Hagar takes her son in her arms, God opens her eyes. Say, God opens her eyes. And the Bible says that when, 
When she opens her eyes, when God opens her eyes, she sees a fountain in the desert. And so she goes and she fills the skin and gives the drink to her son. Two points that I want to make. Number one, something you've got to have in the desert is you must have spiritual vision. Say, I must have spiritual vision. Everything in the desert that you go through, you've got to have a spiritual vision. Because how you see in the desert will determine how you come out of the desert. Hagar is frustrated. Hagar is lamenting the death of us of her son, distraught, waiting for a death that is not even going to occur. Oh. All because her eyes were blinded, all because her eyes were closed and she could not see. And when she sees the fountain that the Lord shows her, when he opened up her eyes, she stopped crying. That desperation, that desperating moment that Hagar had, that desperation that she felt, that desperation where she felt abandoned, she felt alone, she felt hopeless, she felt like there was no way out, she felt like, like this is no solution, there's no way, I'm not going to come out of this, my son is going to die, all came because her eyes were closed. Oh. That's what happens to many people. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, check your eyes. As a matter of fact, look at the person next to you and tell them, I need to check my eyes today. We can never enjoy the resources of God because we are so blinded to the things that are, we're blinded to the spiritual things of God. If you look at the book of, of Kings, there is a story in your Bible about Elisha. And the Bible says in 1 Kings that the Elisha is about to be killed by a huge army. I believe there were about 30,000 men that came to kill one prophet named Elisha. And the Bible says that Elisha did not panic. Elijah did not cry. Elijah did not doubt God. Elijah said, come here, servant. I want God. Can you please? Please open his eyes so that he can see what I see. And the Bible says that when the Lord opened the servant's eyes, he looked out and he saw a great army of heaven coming against the army that was coming against Elisha. Tell the Lord, open my eyes. Elijah one day, while he was praying for rain, the Bible says that he could hear the rain already with only the cloud the size of a man's hand. We need to have our eyes checked. That's the problem in the desert. The Bible says that Noah began to build an ark in the middle of a drought. It had never rained before. And he's hammering the nails. And he's hammering this nail and that nail. Everybody's looking at him going, Noah, you're crazy. But he knew. He had spiritual insight to something that nobody else did the lack of your revelation the lack of your eyesight the lack of your spiritual vision is what will take you to frustration the lack of your spiritual vision will cause you to become sad that will cause you and it will take you to cry when you shouldn't even be crying it will take you to be discouraged when you shouldn't even be discouraged it'll take you to confess things and say things that you ought not to be saying in your desert all because of a lack of spiritual vision and what happens is we expect the worst and we become negative all because we have spiritual blindness and we cannot see the hand of God operating in the desert but the desert is to open your eyes the desert was created to open your eyes because when God opens Hagar's eyes she stopped thinking she stopped believing that her son was going to die I wonder what Hagar must have thought she was crying for things that she not need to cry about she was crying about something that was so unnecessary have you ever cried about something that is so unnecessary because God's got you because God's got your back because God's got your future because God already wrote your story in the book of life because God already said it's yes and amen because God said this is going to turn out good because God said that's not going to bring me any glory this is not going to bring me glory you better believe God's going to answer you to bring glory to all your story the bible says that when she saw the fountain say she saw the fountain see this fountain was always there but her blindness couldn't see it 
My prayer today is that God open your eyes. My prayer today, and I prophesy over all of you, that your eyes would be enlightened to be able to see the hand of God, to be able to see the fountain in the middle of your famine, to be able to see the fountain in the middle of your drought. That is my prayer for you. God remove the blindness from Hagar's eyes. That God would remove the scales, church, off of our eyes. That God would remove the veil off of our eyes. Because blindness does not let you see and does not let you perceive the hand of God already operating in the middle of that desert. And when you are spiritually blind, you cannot enjoy what's already yours. You know what poverty is? Poverty is not lack of money. Poverty is lack of vision. Oh, shit, okay. I'm going to say it again. Your problem is not a lack of money. Your problem is a lack of vision. Because you think you don't have. But it's in the desert that you find unlimited resources. Oh, somebody got to grab that. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Tell them, Lord, open my eyes. I want to see the resources. Open my eyes. I want to see the fountain in my life. Nothing worse than having no vision. There is nothing worse than having no vision. That's why the Bible says in Habakkuk, my people perish for lack of vision. Give somebody with vision $10,000. And when you come back a year later, they made something with it. Give somebody $10,000 that has no vision, they ate it all up. Poverty is not lack of money. Poverty is a lack of vision. There was a fountain there all along. The fountain was there. It wasn't like God heard the cry of Ishmael and said, I think I'll put a fountain in the desert because now they don't have water. <sighs> lack of vision and no perception. And some don't realize that. Sometimes we're fighting and we're fighting battles, beloved, and you can't see the battle right. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. People are not our enemies. I said people are not our enemies. I said people are not our enemies. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers, and authorities of this dark world. People are not your enemy, but we can't see right. We get blinded by it. Your husband is not the enemy. No, your wife is the enemy. Nor people that have hurt you and betrayed you. They're not your enemies. That's why it says bless those that curse you. Because they're not your enemy. It's the enemy behind that. But we can't see that. We become so distorted in our view of things. When you are a person of spiritual vision, in the middle of your desert, you see water in the desert. When you have spiritual vision, you see a door when no one sees it. When you are a person with spiritual vision, you prosper when others don't. When you are a person with spiritual vision, you can overcome anything in the middle of the desert. Because the lack of vision does not permit us to access what God has already given us. That's why people don't tithe. And you will be in lack for the rest of your life. Because all you see is what you don't have. Instead of saying, in my desert, I'm going to give my 10% and my offerings. I didn't get any amens there. Lack of vision. Say lack of vision. Say lack of vision. The lack of vision doesn't let us permit us to see it doesn't permit us to see what God has already provided in there the lack of perception the lack of discernment the lack of vision the lack of revelation there's a story in your Bible and many of you know it and if you don't let me reiterate it the Bible says that Elijah was one of the greatest prophets say Elijah he was one of the greatest prophets and when his time was up to go be with the Lord the Bible says that he looked at Elisha who was his like right hand guy always followed Elijah he was his serving Elijah all the time so Elijah looks at Elisha and says Elisha what can I do for you before I go and be with my God and he's Elisha turns around and he has the audacity he has the guts to say I want a double portion of what you carry 
This boy wasn't playing games. He wasn't like, I got offended because he hurt me. I mean, this guy, give me a double portion of what you carry. And the Bible says that Elijah says to him, if, look what he says. He didn't say go on a 10 day fast. He didn't say go and pray for five hours. He said, if you see me, when I go and you see me, it will be yours. Elisha was able to access something out of Elijah's mantle because he was able to see. It was through his vision that he was able to access. And the Bible says that Elisha exactly double portion as Elijah. He performed double miracles. He was short one miracle, Elisha. He dies. And the Bible says a person died once. And they said, hey, Elisha was buried over there. Put him on Elisha's bones. And they put a dead man in the bones of Elisha. And the man resurrects. That's power. If, you're, if your dead bones are still resurrecting somebody, you got power of God. And Eli that was his last double portion. That was the miracle that, that, that finished and terminated the double portion. Your God. Is a God of his word. He said, if it's, if you see me, then it's yours. Not if you fast, not if you pray, not to say that we don't do that. He said, if you see me and you see the chariots of fire that are coming to get me, then you qualify because you just saw it. If you see me, it's yours. The problem with us is that we can't see anything. Hagar, there was a fountain in the middle of your desert all along, but you couldn't see it because you were blinded to spiritual things and the spiritual uh, realm of the spirit. Where the enemy will attack you the most in your desert will be your spiritual vision. That's the reason why he lies to you all the time. You will never, you can't conquer. You will never come out of this. The devil is such a liar. What he's trying to do is he's trying to get you to have foggy vision. What he's trying to do, he's trying to put a veil over your eyes so that you don't see the unlimited resources that are already provided for you in the desert. So that you don't see the manna that's going to come down from heaven. So that you don't see the water that's going to flow from a rock. So that you don't see the blessings of God in the middle of your desert. So that you don't see the hand of God in the middle of your desert. The devil will attack your vision in the middle of your desert you've got to have open eyes to see what God is doing because where we lose vision depression comes where we lose vision hopelessness comes where we lose vision sadness comes where we lose vision doubt will always come you cannot see an exit you have no way out you say well it always be like that and then you find yourself speaking things that you ought not to be speaking and you end up crying about things that you don't need to be crying about because there's no sense of direction in your life but it's in the desert that God begins to open up your eyes and when you lack vision you see no way out all you see is what's happening when you have no vision all you see is the problem all you see is the kids all you see all is the, the misbehavior all you see is the circumstance all you see is what you don't have all you see is what they did to you all you see is this that and the other instead of looking at what God has already provided in the middle of the desert all you see is what you don't have. All you see is what you have not attained. All you see is how far you haven't come. All you see is all the doors that, that the enemy is using against you. All you see is the bad. And that cannot work. Because you are being controlled by an atmosphere that you are living in. Like Hagar, instead of believing God, instead of believing God, instead of saying, God, I'm in the middle of the desert, but you are the God of deserts. <laughs> you are the God that manifests your power in the middle of a desert. Instead of saying, God, I will lift my hands up. I want you to show me the resources that you're going to provide for my family, the restoration. I'm going to believe you, God. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 31, believe in the Lord your God, you and your family shall be saved. And when there is no vision, you cannot see your way out. You can't see your way out. You, you can't see your way out of the problem. You can't see your way out of the marriage. You can't see your way out. You know why? Because you're blind. And God has to open our eyes. Say, open my eyes, God. Vision in the desert. Vision in the desert. You have to have vision of what God will do. Because when you have vision in the desert, you can close your eyes and rest. 
Because you will know what God will do tomorrow. Your eyes have got to be opened. Your eyes have got to be open. Because he is a God that gives vision. When you have vision, people will call you crazy. Because what normally, normally what people cry about, you're laughing about. When you have vision, when others have insomnia, you are snoring away. When the storm is tormenting other people, you are sleeping like a baby. God has to open our eyes because you look crazy in the middle of the desert. What are you cheery about? I don't know. I'm just happy. Why? Because God's good. Why? I don't know. He's just good. Well, have you gotten to the promise? No. But why are, why are you smiling ear to ear? I, I don't know. He's just good. He's faithful. He's awesome. He's almighty. But I thought you were in lack. I thought you almost lost the house. No, I didn't. God came through in the nick of time. Because my God always has unlimited resources. But I thought you were going under. Ah, I thought you were going under. No, God came through in the nick of time. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard. Our God is a good God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is the God of the desert. Our God is a God that opens our eyes and we can see the goodness of God and we can see the fountain. Oh Lord, that you would open up our eyes in the middle of our deserts. Open up our eyes so that we can see your unlimited resources. When your eyes are closed, you can't even perceive the presence of God. There's a story I was meditating on yesterday, really late at night, and I was sitting there, and I was, I, 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 I just, I wanted to get to heaven and slap these guys. <laughs> Jesus, okay, Luke, chapter Luke, the Bible says that these two disciples, say two disciples, they're walking with Jesus, say they're walking with Jesus. Jesus, they're walking with Jesus, and you know what the Bible says about them? They did not recognize Jesus. They're talking to Jesus. And they do not recognize Jesus. How is that possible? Look at Luke chapter 24. I got to read it to you because you got to see this. Chapter 24 verse 13. Now that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. About seven miles from Jerusalem. Give me the next one I gave you. Chapter four, uh, verse 13. Four, yeah. But they were kept from recognizing him. They couldn't recognize him. They couldn't see Jesus. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? And they stood still. Their faces, what? Downcast. One translation says that they were sobbing. They were sad. So he's walking with Jesus. Picture this. Let me re reiterate it. They're walking with Jesus. Two disciples. They're walking with Jesus. And they're just talking. And they're asking him questions. And then, and then Jesus turns around and is like, what are you guys talking about? And then they just kind of like... Um, we're just sad. <laughs> you got the master next to you. We're just sad. Why are you sad? Jesus says. <laughs> and the Bible says that they could not see the master. Look what it says in verse 17 or 20. Go, go to 30. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. And the Bible says this, that it wasn't until they began, he broke the bread Read the story. The Bible says, check it out, that they opened their eyes and they said, it was Jesus we were talking to. Dummies. I think the conversation would have gone different. They were talking nonsense because they could not see that it was Jesus they were. Can you imagine walking by the master and it, they just talking and talking away, talking nonsense. Go read the chapter. They were talking nonsense. And it wasn't until they sat at the table. They were sad in the presence of Almighty God. And it wasn't until they sat in the table and he broke the bread. The Bible says that their eyes opened and they said, Jesus, it's you. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I've been here all along. What dummies. But doesn't that happen to us all the time? You are in the presence of an almighty God when you come here. And when you pray, then you walk away sad. 
What's wrong with you? I'm just having a bad day. I'm in a funk. Have you ever been in a funk? I hate funky days. But you were in the presence of God. It's that the enemy has blinded you. And you can't see. People with no vision. All you see is closed doors. All you see is no way out. Stumbling with the enemy. Stumbling with the enemy. I think it's happened to all of us. What's impressive is that God permits Hagar to see what was already there. The fountain was already there. It was already there. Before Hagar needed water, the fountain was already there. I'm going to say it again. Before Hagar needed water, the fountain was already there. So let me give you some news flash. God has a plan in your desert. God has a plan in your test. God has already planned an exit. God has already planned the fountain. God has already planned the exit. God has already planned the solution. God has already planned the way out God has already planned the promise God has already planned the solution God has already planned the door Hagar's solution and her answer was waiting for her in the desert but it was held back not because of God because she was lacking in vision and every time there is a desert that is planned for you there will always be a strategy a plan of God there will always be an exit there will always be a way out there is always a plan of God because God is a perfect architect he knows how to design your life so perfectly he is the greatest architect he knows how to design you he knows how to design your life he's already planned it ahead of time and everything that you need is already in your desert I prophesy that your eyes would open and that the Holy Spirit would begin to enlighten you. I pray that you will understand that there are fountains in your desert, that there are resources that God is allowing in your desert so that you can see. And while, hear me, while Hagar cried, water was flowing. While Hagar was crying, there no water. My son's going to die. There was a fountain right there all along. All because she could not see. But I pray that you will not be like Hagar. I pray that you will see. I pray that none of you and that are listening to the sound of my voice will be like Hagar. I pray that when you walk through your deserts and when you walk through your testings, your eyes would be enlightened. Your spiritual eyes would be able to see that the God that you serve is an almighty God. The ark architect of the universe the one that knows how to plan it the one that knows how to put it together I pray that you will not be like Hagar because God God always has a plan he would never order the desert if there was no plan if there was no form if there was no strategy if there was no exit to move you up and above and beyond even if the serpent is in the desert I came to tell you even if the desert is and serpents are in the desert it cannot touch you and if if it bites you it will not kill you because God has already planned your life God already planned your exit God already planned your end you are not alone in the desert he has a plan you are not alone in the desert he has a plan you has a plan and after today when you go through your deserts you're gonna say Lord show me the fountain come on somebody shout it show me the fountain because I am a hundred percent positive there is a way out. I am a hundred percent positive that there is a way out. So stop crying without a cause. Stop crying about it. Stop crying without a cause. Stop crying and stop being frustrated without a cause. He will finish it. He will finish it. Hagar was crying. Already planning the funeral of her son. All the while the fountain is like shh. The fountain was flowing, water was flowing out. All the while, God had a plan. Say, God has a plan. Say, God has a plan. Say, God has a plan. Say it one more time, God has a plan. God has a plan. Say, God has a plan. How do I say this to you? Let me say it this way. Madeline, come, run. Let me say this. Madeline comes. She's walking in life. You're walking in life. Come face me. And the Spirit of God puts a word on her. And the Lord says to her, you will be used mightily. 
with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, I feel God's presence. God has a plan for your life. I will use you. Remember that vision you had where you swallowed the microphone and there's a mic inside of you? Do you remember that? Well, that's what I will do in your life. So now, whoosh, I feel God's presence. So now she is a carrier of the word of God. Hold it. The word of God. She carries the word of God. Hear what I'm going to say. She walks through a desert. And as she walks through the desert, God is the architect. And he's watching. And he's taking sh sure, making sure that when the serpent bites, it doesn't kill her. Because there is a word over her life. And when the enemy comes, hear me, the minute the enemy releases a word over your life, the first one to hear it is the devil. And the devil will say, I'm going to do everything possible to make hell for Madeline so that she will not complete the plan of God over her life. Because I heard that. I know the architect that is over her life. I know the design that God has for her life. And I'm afraid of that design. So I'm going to make sure that what she's carrying will not come to fruition. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to cause some snakes, some alligators, some people to betray her. I'm going to create all kinds of things in her walk. That is how it works, beloved. But the architect, my, my God called the architect. As you walk through life, God makes sure that when you are attacked by the devil, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. The Lord and the architect, Almighty God, make sure that if you get sick, that if you get sick, it will not kill you. Because by his stripes, you are healed. God will make sure that if anybody comes to try to derail you, the Lord will make sure that he will provide for you. Your job is to open your eyes and know that you are a carrier of something. And because of that, hear me, you can walk through any desert like that. And the Lord is so good. Come, Josie, run. And the Lord is so good. Stay right there. If Madeline is going through a desert, all of a sudden Josie will be praying. And Josie will be praying. She said, I don't know why, but I just feel the need. I'm not saying this prophetically. I just feel the need to give Madeline a hundred dollars. <laughs> and Madeline will be like, How'd you know? I don't know. I just felt it. Because you will never go through lack. Because you're a carrier of your word. And that word will come to pass over your life. No matter what storm you go through. No matter what test you face. No matter what you go through in life. God will see to it that his word is fulfilled in this lifetime. That his word will come to pass in your life. Oh, Jesus. I would be praising him right now. isn't and what hasn't 
because God accelerated went ahead of the process planned things out in the favor of Hagar and God has gone ahead of you beloved he's ahead of you he's in front of you the Bible says and he is also behind you and he's also supervising you on the side God has gone ahead of you God has accelerated the process God has gone ahead of you and he's put things in your favor oh my God God went before you to meet all your needs the Bible says my God you to think that you're alone there are no resources that's the biggest lie you are never alone you are so planned that the Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 139 that he formed you in your mother's womb and he saw your unformed body he's so committed to you he told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, in your mother's womb, uh, I have knitted you and I have formed you. You can take any journey and any path, beloved, but I came to tell you when you take the true path and even in the deserts, because you will go through deserts. I don't care. I don't know if you've heard preachers say that all life is great and nothing going to happen to you. That's, a, that's not true. There are deserts in life. God will make sure that he will fulfill the plan of God. God cannot take you out of the race. Have you ever seen runners? They run the race and they're running and they're like in these marathons and all of a sudden somebody comes and gives them water. The water boy doesn't run the race for them. The water boy's just there to go here and take a sip. You ready? Yeah, go ahead, another lap. You are in the race, beloved. A long distance one at that. This isn't like, oh my God, I'm on fire for God. Oh, I'm not on fire for God. I'm not, on, no, you're on, a, you're on fire for God till he comes for you. So the water boys will make sure that they come and give you a drink in the desert. <laughs> Hear me, and I end with the second point while you're standing. What activated and what caused the answer of God to come towards Hagar? When Hagar said, he is dying and will die. The Bible says, not her, but Ishmael did what? He cried out loud. So loud that the heavens heard him. He cried out. Hear me, God is not moved by an emotional pity party. He's not moved by a cry out of emotions and feelings and feeling sorry for yourself. No, 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 no. This cry was a different cry. It wasn't a cry of, poor old me, I'm in the desert, I need water. No, this cry was a cry of faith. You want to know what moves the hand of God? Is that when you cry out in the name of Jesus, but you are crying out in faith. Your tears are rolling down, but you are crying out in faith. That's why Hannah gave birth, because she was in the temple and she was crying out to God God give me a baby and the Bible says that the Lord heard her because of her cry an angel of the Lord came down from the heavens the answer came to Hagar when he cried out the angel came when he cried out it will bring solutions from God that's why Jeremiah 33 says cry to me and I will answer thee and I will show you great and mighty things but God doesn't show you when you're blind before showing you he's got to open your eyes and when you cry to God God will open your eyes what activated the solution was a cry from within that's why the Bible says of David I cried unto the Lord and he answered me point number two don't let the desert shut your mouth don't let the desert shut your mouth 
Don't let the desert keep you quiet. Don't let the desert shut your mouth, but cry out unto God with a voice of triumph. Proclaim and speak and cry out to God because Satan is so scared and afraid of a mouth that speaks in faith. Everything that God created, he created it by speaking. Don't let the process, don't let the desert shut your mouth. You got to cry out, cry out to God, cry out to God because God hears. He is El Roy. It doesn't matter the process. It doesn't matter the desert. It doesn't matter the heat of the desert. Do not shut up. I would praise the Lord every day of my life. Ain't no devil gonna shut my mouth. Ain't no devil gonna lie to me and tell me there are no resources in this wilderness. I'm gonna shout a shout. I'm gonna cry aloud. I'm gonna open my eyes. God, show me the fountain. God, I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna speak and cry out to God with the voice of triumph. Holy Spirit, you're going to have to open their eyes. So I felt something in my office. I felt something so strong in my office. If I can get everybody for the next 10 minutes, just everybody, run up here, run, run, run. Five, 10 minutes, hurry, run, 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 run. I felt something so, so, so strong in my office. Father, you're going to open the eyes. You're going to open the eyes. There's not a person that doesn't need their eyes open. There's not a person that doesn't need their eyes checked here. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you're going to begin to open up their eyes. You're going to begin to open up their eyes. You're going to begin to open up their eyes. Open up their spiritual eyes. There are people that are in the desert right now, and they feel the scorching heat, God. They feel God, and they think that you've abandoned them. But the devil's a liar. I came to break every lie from the enemy, God. I declare that their spiritual eyes begin to open and begin to be enlightened today God open up their eyes and let them see let them see the fountain God let them see God that you are the God of the impossible that you are the God the God the creator the creator the heavens of the earth God you are the God yeah there was a cry that came out of our city there is a cry that comes out I want you to just speak in your heavenly language if you can but you're not gonna just speak ah, ah, ah. you're gonna speak to him ah you're gonna speak to him you're gonna speak to him you're gonna speak to him father open their eyes open their eyes oh open their eyes there's a cry that causes angels to come down from the heavens and they begin to act Open my eyes. 
shit. I 